Growing up, I was always told to leave a place better than I found it. I'm ashamed to say that I haven't do so, done so, because every time I send a text message, I get in the car, or I even order a latte, I'm contributing to the global climate change crisis. Global temperatures are steadily rising, and future communities are going to be the ones suffering the bulk of the consequences. We've all seen the overly dire headlines urging us to take action before it's too late. Actually, just last week, I saw a headline that said, California will be underwater in a matter of time. And I was thinking, well, that's good, because I just got a floaty as a present, so I'm ready. <laughs> but regardless of the constant reminders about climate change, on a day-to-day -day basis, it's sometimes hard to worry about it because it seems like an issue of the future. And there's other pressing issues facing us today. People in need of clean water, food, health care, basic rights. So how do we deal with the problems of tomorrow and the problems of today simultaneously? Using clean energy sources like solar power. I'm going to tell you the story of how I've used solar power to help hundreds of children around the world. When I was 14, my mom said the four words you never want to hear. We need to talk. She sat me down, and I knew something was up. And she said, your father has a brain tumor. And I remember I was so scared, wrapped up in uncertainty. My father had to go undergo a large surgery, which went well. But there was one major side effect. He underwent a lot of hearing loss. Now, at first, I didn't think that hearing loss would be a massive issue. But I quickly realized how difficult it was for my dad to communicate with me with his hearing impairment. And through him, I became introduced to the deaf community in my area. I even worked as a theater teacher with deaf students one summer. I learned about deaf culture. I learned a little bit of sign language. But most importantly, I learned some surprising statistics that led me to take action. So the first of those statistics, 360 million people worldwide have some degree of hearing loss. And of that 360 million, 30 million can benefit from hearing aids, but don't have access to them. And the last, a child's chance of escaping poverty increases drastically with the hearing aid because it gives them the tools they need to get a basic education and to learn crucial communication skills. So when I first heard these statistics, I was thinking, well, why aren't we trying to get hearing aids to these children? And like most 14-year-olds, I looked to Google for my answers. And I found that many organizations were trying to get hearing aids to the children in need. However, there was one big issue. Hearing aids have batteries that need to be replaced every couple of weeks. And these batteries can cost up to $3 a week. And for many families around the world, $3 could be their weekly salary, which makes this an unsustainable option. So normal hearing aids don't really work. Well, what about rechargeable hearing aids, I thought? Well, it turns out a lot of the children that don't have access to hearing aids also don't have access to power outlets or even a constant source of energy. And then it hit me. What does everybody have? We all have UV rays. I could use solar power to charge the batteries to give children lasting ears for years of growth. So that became my goal. I started a nonprofit organization with the hope of bringing solar powered hearing aids to kids in need around the world. But in order to do so, I needed money. 
something that most 14-year-olds don't have much of. So I thought, I'll do a fundraiser. I would remember reading something online that said there was a bracelet company that had made thousands of dollars selling bracelets. And I thought, that's easy. I can do that. So I went to the store, and I got beads and leather, and I made these awesome, cool bracelets and had my first fundraiser. I was really excited about it. And I made a total of $21. <laughs> it, was, it was a little bit of money, but not quite enough to get a hearing aid. And so I decided I'll have another fundraiser. This time I raised a little over $100. I was closer, but still not there. So I had another fundraiser and another and another and another and finally, I was just barely close enough. And I had enough money that I could bring solar powered hearing aids to a group of deaf students in Mexico who needed them. So there I was, 14 years old, alone, traveling to Mexico with a bunch of solar powered hearing aids in my backpack. I remember I showed up at the school and the students were eagerly awaiting. They were so excited to get their hearing aids. The first child I ever fit with the hearing aid was named Jesus. Jesus was the cutest little four-year-old boy you'd ever seen, just a ball of energy. And as soon as we attached the hearing aid, you could just see his whole face light up and he let out a little giggle. And his mother's eyes welled with tears. She hugged me and she said, thank you for giving him hope. It was in that moment I realized I'd use solar power to make a significant impact on someone's life. And when I got back from my trip, many people around the world had heard about me. And my inbox flooded with different people asking for solar power hearing aids all around the world. And so that's what I did. In high school, my free time consisted of fundraisers and tutoring students so I had money to travel. And I was able to travel all around the world. Haiti, Honduras, Nicaragua, Sri Lanka, Indonesia, fitting hundreds of children with hearing aids. I was able to help a child hear with just a single small solar panel. If a single solar panel can help a child hear, think about what a million massive solar panels can do. What if our roads, our schools, and our communities were built with solar panels? Enough solar energy hits the earth every hour to power all of humanity for an entire year. If America alone was to use 10% of its energy using solar energy, we would reduce our pollution output by 280 million metric tons by 2030. Solar energy can help us solve the issues of today and tomorrow simultaneously. As residents of this earth, it is our responsibility to care for our neighbors and to care for our environment. So every time you look outside and you see the sun peeking through the clouds, think about the power of solar power. Thank you.